individuals and as entrepreneurs, we really need to work at being that balm, that solve, that that you know cures or or helps a lot of the ills that the world is facing. And so when we talk about emotional and and you know EQ and IQ and all of these different elements, a big part of this is understanding you know what you can do to help. And so the topic that we're getting into today, um, yeah, peace in Atlanta as well. So. Uh, the topic that we're getting into today, we're talking about it from an individual standpoint, and some of you guys may experience this. There's going to be, I think, a few numbers that are real interesting for you, um, but also take a look at those around you. And if it can help you understand others that you deal with, it can be real beneficial. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, always appreciate you being on. My name is Andrew David. This is the High Performance Call with Blake Newbar's team. Uh, the partner program, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern, here to give you opportunities to learn and grow and work on yourself as well as the skills and talents that you will need to build your business, to build yourself, to build relationships and do what you can to work towards success uh, in every capacity, whatever that may look like for you. So yesterday we talked about a handful of, of personality flaws that a lot of times people will point out and understanding how those flaws can actually be traits and almost be superpowers if you develop them the right way. This came about because of several conversations that I've had with some of you and with other individuals, people that I consult with and a dear friend. Uh, a couple of people talked about ADHD. And so I wanted to spend some time today and probably tomorrow based on some of the information that I've got. I want to help you guys understand this because even if you um, you know, haven't been diagnosed. And I want to begin this call, whether you are watching live or you're watching on a recording, I want to begin this by saying, I am not a licensed psychologist. I am not a therapist. And if you, if any of this resonates with you, or you feel like you want more information, there are professionals out there that you can find. There are now a lot of things that you can find virtually and then book a virtual therapy session if that is needed. This training is not to help you diagnose and or treat any underlying problems. We are here simply to help you kind of recognize what there is in this world, what you're dealing with and, and possibly give you a different point of view that can be beneficial. Okay. Is that all right? I think I've got my disclosure far enough out of the way. Um, I am here simply to share information. And part of that comes from my journey uh, in this entrepreneur world. Okay. Now, and real quick, I got a question from a couple of members recently, and and then part of it was given to to me through some of the accountability reps. Um, we have some brand new people coming in, and so if you're newer to these calls, then great, welcome. But a couple of people have said, um, "Hey, does Andrew actually do any of this stuff online, or is he just up here talking? Is he just a talking head?" And I want to kind of be clear: I've been working online for a number of years in a number of different capacities. Uh, digital agency, yes, do it. Have done it. Have done it. You know both not well and and well. Um, I, I've got drop shipping. I've got a Shopify store, I, I, a couple of different stores with different labels um, from supplements to lotions and soaps. Um, I've done and do some selling on Amazon. I've done affiliate marketing for a number of years in a number of different verticals. Uh, so the stuff that I talk about is stuff that I'm doing. Okay, I just wanna be real clear with that. I'm not just spouting out different theories. With that said, and I've said this before many, many times, a lot of the things that are necessary to build a business to a certain level, I like to outsource because I don't like doing some of it. And studying some of the things that we're going to talk about today made it really obvious to me why I don't like doing some of it. Okay, so understanding yourself is important. Let's go ahead and and, um, and break into some of this, guys. Now, part of this I want to start off with, I went ahead and I did, I was you know, met with a therapist a long time ago. I wanted to share a couple of these. I, I did a couple of online tests in preparation for this. This was the first one. The results are the first one that I got. Your results for this ADHD test is a strong indication, right? That was the first one I did. The second one I took, I left a little thing here, but this was the score that I got on the second one, 23 out of 24, meaning it's, it's kind of a high probability, you know? And so every recommendation that they had at that point was, you should probably talk with somebody. You want to you want to get something taken care of. Um, so, 
I am, I'm just showing this to let you know I'm, I'm in this with you if you feel like any of this resonates with you. If you don't, that's okay. There's still a lot of um, things that you can learn from this. So let's see. Next. And, Andrew, the, the, the web page is sci.com. Like, did you do the, the test there? Like One of them I did there. Yeah. There's, there's a number of different ones you can find that are free um, that, and then they lead you to talking with the doctor. And again, those tests aren't typically meant to fully diagnose. It, it's just an idea that you can have. And then they have a much more in-depth test that they can do. So this is um, kind of a breakdown of what this is. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, is a neurodevelopment disorder that impacts the prefrontal cortex of the brain, the area responsible for executive functions, emotional regulation, impulse control, among other things. Most children with ADHD become adults with ADHD because those symptoms shift and they change. They rarely go away altogether. Now, if you guys have watched, whether live with me or on replay, I've done a bunch of training on emotional intelligence, right? EQ. And there's a great book by the same guys that wrote Strengths Finder that you can get um, just called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. It's a fantastic book, but a lot of the things that we talk about in there, where you talk about the prefrontal cortex, you're talking about emotional relationships, impulsivity, you know, control, all of these other things. If you struggle with ADHD, whether diagnosed or undiagnosed, it can affect your emotional intelligence, your self-awareness, your self-management, your emotional and social awareness and social management. And if you can increase your emotional intelligence, study after study has shown that you make more money, right? This isn't just about better relationships. All of these things play into it, all right? So ADHD, here's a couple of things that it affects, all right? That's where you kind of start off. So emotional regulation, impulse control, executive functions. Now, here's, I know this is a, a bad image. I pulled it from Google, but it should, hopefully you guys can kind of see boys and girls Diagnosed with ADHD, 97 to 2016. Yes, this is in the US. I would venture to guess that these numbers play out over a large part of the world if they were to actually do the tests. Um, although in the US, it may be a little bit higher because I, I have a feeling that sometimes they're a little more um, ready to diagnose with something like this than just say, hey, kids are a little boisterous. Um, but 2014 to 2016 showed that we had about a 15 to 16% of the children you know, tested were, or of children were diagnosed with ADHD, 15 to 16%. Okay. So following that along, a couple of myths about ADHD. First thing, oh, it's not real at all. It is, right? It may be overdiagnosed. It may be that, um, you know, there are other issues that could be there as part of it. Part of it may just be environmental. Part of it may be, um, you know, it, it can be caused by certain things. Uh, environment, um, exposure to toxins, abuse, other things like that. That's absolutely a, a possibility. However, I'm not getting into where it comes from. We're simply looking at what it is and how it affects us. Okay. Another myth is that children can eventually outgrow the diagnosis. We just saw that in the other slide. It's not that people outgrow it. It's that symptoms can change and how it's expressed as adults can change. Right. ADHD only affects boys is a myth. ADHD is a result of bad parenting. That's a myth. If your kid has it or if you've got it, it's not that your parents did a crappy job. Right. People that take ADHD meds are more likely to abuse other substances. People with ADHD never amount to anything. Those are all myths. I will say, though, um, one of those about abusing other some substances. They have shown that people with ADHD may have a higher tendency towards abuse in general, substance abuse, not because of the meds, but because of um, just their tendencies, okay? That obsessive side of it. Now, Jess is saying it's interesting to see the difference between male and female, and it really is. Typically, boys are gonna be a higher level of diagnosis than women, right, than girls. However, part of that, Maybe attributed to a slide here. I've got, I, I don't know if it's the very next one. No, 
couple more slides and we're going to get exactly to what you're talking about, Jess. All right. So here's a couple of things. It is a mental disorder that most often occurs in children, partly in my belief, after I studied and looked at a lot of these things over the last few days, over and over, it looks like adults are just hesitant to go get it diagnosed. We just think we got other problems or we're frustrated or we're anxious or all of it, you know, oh, I, I want to attribute it to something else as opposed to going in, getting diagnosed and saying, oh, here's what's going on. Most of us adults have too many issues with ego and personal nonsense to go in and ask for the help that we should receive. Okay. 6.4 million American children have been diagnosed, four to 17. Here's the thing. Average age of ADHD diagnosis, seven. When they typically first appear, three to six. Okay, 6.1% of American children are being treated for ADHD with medication. How many did we say? 15 to 16% are diagnosed. Only 6% are taking any kind of meds. There's been a 42% increase. Now, part of that increase, absolutely, I believe, is part of technology. Part of it is the way we are teaching in schools. Part of it is the way around the world physical activity is being limited in schools. That all plays into it. Okay. So I have a comment in here. Uh, male fetuses are also more sensitive to toxins. Absolutely. If, uh, if that's the case, I'll believe you. If, if I, I don't, I don't know that, but I'll, if that's what it is, then sure. So as an adult guys, here's what I want you to think about common symptoms. Again, this is not to diagnose, this is to help you understand a little bit better yourself. If you have problems focusing on a task, disorganization, problems prioritizing. And guys, chime in. How many of you guys feel like a chunk of these you experience? Acti excessive activity or restlessness, poor time management, impulsivity. So how many of you guys listen and I, look, I experienced this and some of you guys may have experienced it on, on one of our strategy sessions where you're trying to say something and I'm already starting to answer something because I'm not paying attention. I'm speaking out of turn. I am paying attention to what you're saying, but I grab a hold of something that was said and I'm ready to answer you, man. Right? How many of you guys do that in your conversations? Part of it may be a little bit of ADHD. Problems following through, easily angered or annoyed. Right? So again, you may not be, if you feel like you need to get diagnosed and, and we're going to, at the end of today and then into tomorrow, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. Go talk to somebody, guys, especially, look, especially after 2020, for crying out loud, after the year that we have had, that you have had, that every single one of you has had, there is nobody on here that hasn't experienced some kind of upheaval, turmoil, you know, whether it's stuck at home or being forced to work when everyone else is stuck at home, it's being stuck with family in a way that you never imagined that you would be. You always wanted to work from home. And then you started spending 24 hours a day with the people that you love and you went, holy crap, I need some privacy, right? Maybe it's that. Maybe you put on the COVID-19. Maybe you lost weight because you were extra anxious or stressed out. Whatever it is, if you have ADHD, if there is depression, if there's any of these other things that you ex have experienced, now is the time to seek out help. Okay. Um, I got to think, I, I think I'm redlining on some of these symptoms and you may be, um, and there really has been some changes. Point of this is you're, you're doing that. And now we're taking that step to better yourself. And all of you guys, I, I applaud you all the time. I love seeing everybody on here. The key to Helping yourself sometimes includes finding help. We talked about that last week a little bit with Jason about having not just a mentor, but having a team around you. There are things that happen at that point. Um, you know, oftentimes the worry, the stress, the frustration that you feel that can come into play even more when, it, when you have ADHD because of that overactive mind. You're great at being creative. You're also great at creatively coming up with obstacles and frustrations and fears. Sometimes having the right person that you can talk with can help you deal with that, right? Easy example is um, that I saw as I was studying all this stuff is, you know, if you're alone in, in a dark warehouse, and you're there by yourself, you freak out, you're scared, you're worried. And some of you guys are kind of dealing with that with your business, with life. 
If you've got somebody next to you that you can talk through that worry with, that's the right kind of person, not someone that's going to, you know, multiply your frustrations, but the right kind of person, then you're in that same warehouse and it's dark and you're, you know, you're making burping and farting noises and you're laughing about what's going on and you're just giggling in the corner, right? The right team member can do amazing things. Whether that's a team member, a mentor, a coach, whatever, a therapist, sometimes that, that additional person is important, whether it's ADHD related or not. Um, I only do it to my wife or I wouldn't get a word in. Well, that's, that's a whole other conversation. We could talk about relationships at some point, guys. All right. So if any of these things, these are common symptoms of ADHD. Now, here's something to think about. Andrew. If you, yes, Maria. Um, does uh, ADHD like uh, expresses like itself? <laughs> I don't know if that's correct. Uh, the same in boys and in girls? Like, is it the same symptoms? You're, you're, you're jumping right on my slide here. Oh. Female behavior described as flighty, aloof, or having her head in the clouds is actually a description, sorry, of ADHD symptoms. But the description seemed to blame the women. In women, distraction is more likely to be misinterpreted as representative of her intelligence. It's unfortunate, guys, but this is the reality of the world that we're in and in professional situations. Silent symptoms don't draw a lot of attention, but definitely create barriers. For example, struggling through a to-do list, finishing a project, sitting down. Oftentimes, if whether male or female, you could be experiencing ADHD and it's not necessarily that you're up and running around. You're struggling inside yourself to sit here and pay attention. And some of you guys with this, you know, a 30 minute call, a 40 minute call, and you're going, holy crap, like let's, let's get going, right? I, I mean, when I get to, I love attending seminars and events, but it's hard for me to sit through a full day. I get up and I'm in the back of the room because I know that's the only way I'm going to pay attention. But unfortunately for a lot of women, you deal with these things and it's, they're oftentimes either diagnosed or undiagnosed symptoms of something like ADHD or something else. Again, I am not a doctor or therapist. I'm simply sharing the studies and, and research with you guys. Oftentimes these things are misdiagnosed and, and it's, you know, she just can't finish a task. We can't trust her to get something done. She's a little flighty. Yeah, she's not as intelligent. Whereas with guys, it, it's something else. I mean, he's just hyper-focused on other things, right? Yeah, so autism and Asperger's, there's a lot of that. You know, my son I've mentioned is PDD NOS, which is pervasively developmentally delayed, not otherwise specified, meaning Asperger's, autism, but a large part of people with on that spectrum suffer from elements of ADHD as well, right? Because part of ADHD lends itself to inactivity or, or inability to focus or hyper-focused and hyperactivity, right? It's, it's oftentimes in the extremes. Um, as a woman with these symptoms, you are uh, in a minority among other women who seem to be able to get it all done. One important thing to remember about this, man or woman in this situation, guys, do not compare yourself to other people and what you think other people are or are not able to do. Because I will tell you right now, oftentimes your perception is skewed, especially if you deal with ADHD, depression, right? Anxiety, any of those elements. If you are trying to compare yourself with other people, this is where that creative mindset comes in. And we are attributing either skills, strengths, or accomplishments to people that oftentimes haven't done it. Okay. So that all that does is simply exacerbate the problem that I'm feeling that I'm inadequate and it's not helpful. And I know it's easy to say, Hey, no, you're wrong. Stop thinking about that. It's not easy to do it. That's where, you know, whether therapist or accountability partner or coach or mentor can really be beneficial for you and you should think about it. Okay. So uh, think moving about, along. Think about this Go if you have it as the Japanese art of uh, fixing broken things. You are like, you have a golden scar. Like, I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. We'll, we'll, uh, we're going to talk about treatment and, and ways to deal with some of this tomorrow, guys. But so, so there's a, a professor from Syracuse and he's also a high level entrepreneur. He teaches entrepreneurship at Syracuse. His name is John Torrens. Uh, he's a member of a, an entrepreneur organization and 
with the study that he's done because he was diagnosed with ADHD, started thinking a lot about it, looked at what was going on. He went out and they surveyed 400 businesses within this entrepreneur organization. I want to say it's YPO. Um, and you You've got to achieve a certain level of success to be a member all these other things. So they surveyed 400 businesses, 100 of, of those that surveyed that, or they surveyed more, 400 businesses turned it in, 100 of the ones that turned it in didn't actually finish the survey well enough to properly use. They're looking for, for signals of ADHD. If that doesn't tell you a little bit about it, then, you know, I, I don't know what other evidence we can have. Here's the cool thing about that. What did we say? 12 to 15%, 15, 16% of children were diagnosed with ADHD. 62% of those surveyed, the CEOs surveyed of these companies showed signs of ADHD, likely ADHD, 62%. So if you've been going through life and you think ADHD and dyslexia and some of these other things are going to inhibit your ability to achieve, you've got to look at it a little bit differently. There are elements that apply itself to ADHD that can can be very beneficial, that can be. Now, here's a couple of things. Their companies, their businesses showed signs of higher levels of innovation. Their businesses also were more likely to be risk takers within their industry. They were proactive. They moved quickly when markets shifted and they had an entrepreneurial orientation, meaning employees and others were more likely to make decisions. There was some freedom within the organizations to act in that way. Right. These are the businesses that showed the higher level with the CEOs that had some ADHD also showed these things. They also showed signs of urgency, lack of premeditation, meaning the paralysis by analysis. But they also there was a little bit of uh, lack of perseverance, seeing things all the way through. So how many of you thinking about this, look at yourselves, your companies, how many of you guys maybe are a little higher risk takers, but then don't see things all the way through right? The great thing is, before I jump there, these people, they were more likely to have more than one business, more than one pursuit. They were doing more than one thing. A chunk of them were just as likely to be starting a new business while they were taking the survey as anything else, because they're always on to something new. They're always chasing something. And that's not a bad thing, unless you give up on what you could achieve, right? So this is where we're battling between the, the traits and the strengths and, and whether or not it's a flaw in how we interact. One thing to remember with this though, guys, people with ADHD had a higher rate of dyslexia, depression, substance abuse, and anxiety. Again, none of these things are, are anything that cannot be overcome, right? Richard Branson, dyslexia. John Torres, dyslexia. A lot of these other individuals had that issue. That doesn't mean it's got to stop you. It simply means you've got to recognize your strengths and you've got to find that help where you need it. Okay. So thinking about the people in your lives though. Now, talking about ADHD and the cycle of entrepreneurship, I want to share that with you guys a little bit today. All right. And, and we're going to wrap with this cycle. There's a handful of elements here that I want you guys to kind of pay attention. So as an entrepreneur, especially one with ADHD, there's typically, now this, this applies to all of you. If you're like, yeah, that's not me, that's fine. This cycle still applies. It's just magnified a little bit, right? So number one is overcoming the cynic. Both the cynic outside and the cynic inside. First thing that an entrepreneur is good at is overcoming the cynic not listening to the naysayers, not listening as people tell you, hey, that's not going to work. This isn't going to work. The entrepreneur with ADHD, the ones that are, are impulsive, the ones that act and are risk takers, those are the ones that boarded the Mayflower and came to the new world. These are the ones that you know, have created new languages, the printing press for the first time, that changed cultures all over the world, that G Steve Jobs creating Apple and, and that technology and imagining having a computer in everybody's home and Bill Gates and social media and health and all of these things. Oftentimes, if you look back, many of these people were diagnosed in this way because they just, they wouldn't listen. They were impulsive. Their attention was short. Sometimes you need to overcome the cynic that's outside 
but you also need to be able to overcome the cynic inside. Number two, once you've overcome it, once you've established what it is you're going after, it's the ability to take it seriously and not laugh at it. Because a lot of people will. You tell them, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do this. Let them laugh. I think it was Ernie yesterday. He said he had a, a dad that was saying things. He said, listen, it's not your life. Look, I'm going to take this serious. I'm going to see it through. <coughs> Next is chasing it with an avid and faithful pursuit. Chasing it down no matter what. That faithful pursuit, whether it is, is based in your belief in God and a higher power helping you, or it is based in yourself, faith is simply a belief in something that may be unseen, and yet it is true. Or you believe it to be true well enough to work and chase it down no matter what. And all of you hopefully are engaged in that pursuit right now. Now, once you're engaged in the pursuit and you're chasing it, the next thing is disappointment. There will be moments of disappointment. Sometimes they are small, sometimes they are large, but that is part of life as an entrepreneur. It's going to happen, whether it's an ad, whether it's not being able to get funding for something, whether it's you know frustration in launching, a downturn in the market, whatever it is, disappointment may happen. But the entrepreneur, especially the entrepreneur with, with a little bit of ADHD, doesn't let that stop them because they've got grit. They've got that no quit gene. They got the gene inside them that says, I don't care what's going on. I'm not giving up. This is that singular and that obsessive focus. We were talking about yesterday, the commitment and the inability to commit. It's not that I can't commit. It's that I'm so damn committed to myself, my dream that everything else seems to get in the way. So if you can find a partner that will stand by you and lift you and support you, you will forever have an easier pathway on this journey. So a lot of times entrepreneurs with a bit of ADHD experience this and are known for it. Next is positive intervention comes about because you're chasing it down. Now that positive intervention, what it what does it look like? It could be this. It could be showing up here. It's getting mentored one-on-one. -on -one. It's finding the right kind of system that you can use. It's finally finding a program that gives you some support or gives you a pathway. Whereas before you kind of struggled in the dark by yourself, you were alone in the warehouse so whether it's a mentor, it's a team member, it's someone that you can bring along on the journey that's going to help lift you up, that's oftentimes what you need. Okay. Um, let's see, David. Yeah, I'll get to some of these things. All right. Next, the realization of your dream. That's that next step. Because you can achieve it with grit, with determination, bringing the right intervention into play, stepping into it, allowing yourself to experience that intervention from the right source and pushing your way through no matter what with that avid and faithful pursuit. This journey as an entrepreneur, especially with ADHD, is all of this, is this resonating with some of you guys? Is there a little bit of this here going on? Right? It's definitely. Big, big time. Hell yeah. Absolutely. I'd venture to guess that at least 60 to 62% of you guys suffer at least some of these symptoms. Right now, you hit the nail on the here's, head. here's how you ram and treat it. That's what you got to look at. My best and worst traits. Understanding that you don't have to suffer from these symptoms. It's understanding what they are and how to deal with them. Now, if we had a way to identify and deal with these traits, to not just, and, and I'm not against medication. Some people really need it with therapy. I'm not the doctor, I'm not diagnosing this, but if we can more than just treat with medicine, but provide you with things that you can do to develop the traits in a positive way, would that be beneficial? Would that be helpful? And this is what you guys have to do. When I, you know, I was joking in the email that I sent out earlier where the doctor diagnosed me with ADHD, and honestly, I don't remember all of it because honestly, I wasn't paying attention to a bunch of it. I got bored, right? 
Now you walk out of something like that and you can either say, this is going to be a disability. This is going to keep me back. This is going to hamper my growth. Or you go, hey, I'm going to figure things out anyway. I'm going to overcome anyway. So part of this journey for me wasn't diving deeper into ADHD. It's just diving deeper into myself for crying out loud. Understanding who I am, how I deal with things. I brought in my fiance right before this and I showed her the you know, the little indicator and the 23 out of 24. And she started laughing. She went, yeah, it's pretty damn accurate. Right. I'm grateful to have someone in my life that helps balance out certain aspects because Lord knows, and straight out of her mouth, she has some of those same elements in her life as well. Right. But understanding that brings you a sense of power. So you guys felt like this was beneficial at all, a little bit of helpful, you know, understand things a little bit better. Okay, good. So if that's the case, then tomorrow, this is what I got for you, boys and girls. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about, especially if you have some ADHD as an entrepreneur, five traps to avoid, five ADHD superpowers, and then five steps to train your brain so you can do this better. Okay. So there are traps when it comes to ADHD that will cause you to stumble and fall and never really get yourself going. There are ways to take those traits and turn them into superpowers. Right. It, it's not that we are under diagnosing. It is not that, you know, a lot of it may just be not having the right resources. But you guys are now in a world where as an entrepreneur, what you give yourself, the tasks that you give yourself, the goals that you give and what you lay out on your own pathway is what is going to help you achieve. And if you say, here's things that I struggle with, I can spend the next two years beating my head against the wall, trying to figure out how the hell to do it. Or I can say, here you go, right? Fix this for me. Let's get myself advancing and, and be able to rely on, on where I'm at. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I appreciate you. I hope you got a little bit out of this. No matter what is going on around you, understand better yourselves, understand better your abilities and allow yourself to always rise up from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are. I will see you guys tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel right at noon. Thank you guys so much. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Bye. Andrew. Make yes. it a great day, everybody. Later. Yeah. Make sure you have a call. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Email me and we can set up a time if we need okay. a call. Okay. All right, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. Have a good day. You too.